Hello everyone and welcome to the Hypertensive Urgency vs Emergency video. This is a continuation of our cardiology video series that you can find on our channel. I decided to make a video on this topic for two main reasons. One, it is high yield for the USMLEs and two, because it is very common in your clinical practice. And I was surprised to see that a lot of people got the answer wrong on my daily question post on this topic on our official Instagram account. So here it is, definition and treatment of hypertensive urgency and emergency. Now on this slide you can see that a normal blood pressure is below 120 over 80 and hypertension stage 2 is above 140 over 90. For details regarding what is hypertension and what is normal blood pressure and the latest guidelines, please check out my video dedicated on this topic. And hypertensive urgency is defined as blood pressure 1 above 180 over 120 without end organ damage, which we will discuss in the next slide. And hypertensive emergency is blood pressure above 180 over 120 with acute end organ damage. Now what is acute end organ damage? We can break it down into four main categories. If your blood pressure is so elevated that is above 180 over 120, there can be consequences, right? For example, you can end up with acute pulmonary edema, atherosclerotic stenosis, aortic aneurysm and generalized atherosclerosis. In the cerebrovascular system, what can you see is acute hypertensive encephalopathy with altered mental status. You can have acute intracerebral hemorrhage, you can have lacunar infarction, retinopathy, stroke, vascular dementia. All this stuff can be consequence negative from increased blood pressure above 180 over 120. Now, cardiac damage includes AFib, heart failure, left ventricular hypertrophy and myocardial infarction. And renal damage includes acute kidney injury, albuminuria, CKD, which is chronic kidney disease and proteinuria. Now, it is very important for you to understand the concept here, right? In hypertensive urgency, the patient will come completely asymptomatic. That's why we call it without end organ damage. The patient comes, they're completely asymptomatic. They might be coming for a totally different reason to your clinic or to the hospital, right? For example, last week I saw two patients with hypertensive urgency with blood pressure above 180 over 120. It was around 190, 220 over 130 and 115 around this age. And they were completely asymptomatic. Whereas in hypertensive emergency, you will definitely, definitely see some consequence already happen to this patient. Because as you know, the hypertension is called the silent killer along with diabetes, right? You don't feel it, you feel completely fine, they check your blood pressure, it is through the roof, but you still don't feel anything. So until you start feeling anything that is bothering you, then you start taking things seriously. It, it is just human nature, unfortunately, but you have to be very careful. So what do we do when a patient comes with hypertensive urgency? When a patient comes with hypertensive urgency, again, completely asymptomatic with blood pressure above 180 over 120. Your first goal is to check for any neurological deficit to ask the patient how are they doing, if they're feeling anything, they'll do an EKG and then you have to treat them, right? You cannot just let them go to home like this with such huge high blood pressure. So what you do is actually you're going to give them some medication. Which medications can you use? Clonidine is first choice. What is clonidine? Mechanism of action. Clonidine is an, is an alpha-2 agonist and by stimulating the alpha-2 adrenergic receptors in the brainstem and in the periphery, it will the, inhibit the sympathetic activity and thus will lower the blood pressure. It works like magic. What dose you want to give the patient? 0.1 or 0.2 milligrams oral. Then after the patient receives the clonidine or for that matter captopril also, uh, is another option, but it's not so commonly used. The dose you can see here 6.25 or 12.5. It's not used so often because it tends to drop the blood pressure uh, a little bit longer than clonidine. So first choice, remember, forget about captopril just for 
completeness, first choice in hypertensive urgency is clonidine. What is the dose? 0.1 to 0.2 oral medication. After the patient takes this medication, you're going to observe them for a couple of hours. You're going to see how the blood pressure is dropping nicely and then you can discharge them home or just send them home if they're coming to the clinic for a completely different matter, right? Now at home you want to start them on some long-term therapy, right? You cannot just drop the blood pressure uh, for a couple of hours and then just discharge them without any antihypertensive therapy. They should be on therapy. So let's see what kind of long-term maintenance therapy we can give them. First scenario is the patient has been treated for hypertension, but for some reason they were not taking their medication. So what do you do in this case? You ask them, are you taking any antihypertensive medications, right? So what you can do is just restart their prior medications or increase the dose of their existing antihypertensive medications if the, the doses are too low and it's not working on them. Or you can add some, some medication, right? The Redig or any other uh, antihypertensive pills. If a patient has never been treated for hypertension, you have several choices here and the choice of antihypertensive is entirely dependent on the patient's comorbidities and what is appropriate for him for long-term antihypertensive therapy. So the choices here are calcium channel blocker like nifedipine 30 to 60 milligrams, beta blocker like metoprolol, these are all long-acting medications, right? Metoprolol XL 50 milligrams, uh, adjutacin converting enzyme inhibitors, the ACE inhibitors like ramipril 10 milligrams. You can use uh, a sartan drug which is the ARBS drug, angiotensin receptor blockers like valsartan 80 to 60 milligrams and of course thiazide diuretic which is the mainstay of uh, hypertensive treatment. If the blood pressure goal is above 20 systolic and above 10 diastolic it is reasonable to start the, the patient after you stabilize him with clonidine on dual antihypertensive therapy because think about it. Do you think that one blood pressure medication will drop the blood pressure and we'll be uh, able to control the blood pressure if the blood pressure is above 180 over 120? No, I don't think so. So most commonly we use two medications and based on the accomplished trial, which I will show you in the next slide, the recommendation is to start uh, long acting dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers like remember the dihydropyridines dilate they uh, end on dipping amlodipine nifedipine etc whereas the non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers they decrease the heart rate okay all right so here based on the accomplished trial uh, they're recommending use of long-acting dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers like amlodipine which they used in the trial but you can of course use nifedipine of co again and long-acting ACE inhibitor like benazapril. All right, so let's discuss the treatment of hypertensive emergency now. Again, like in the hypertensive urgency, you do not want to drop the blood pressure too low, too fast. I cannot stress this enough. You want to take measures, immediate measures, but carefully, so you do not cause ischemic complications. And for most hypertensive emergencies, the mean arterial pressure, which was one third systolic, plus two-thirds diastolic blood pressure, which is usually in the range of 70 to 110 and why 70? Because 70 will ensure cerebral tissue perfusion. So the mean arterial pressure here in hypertensive emergency should be reduced by approximately 10 to 20% in the first hour and then gradually over the remaining 23 hours. So altogether, your goal is to drop the blood pressure approximately 25% compared with baseline. All right, so I will talk here uh, only about the most commonly used medications that we use in hypertensive emergencies. And first we're gonna start with the calcium channel blockers, the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, which dilate, the dihydropyridines dilate and the non-dihydropyridines like Verapamil and Diltiazem, they, they will decrease the heart rate. And the dihydropyridines, they will decrease the blood pressure. That's why we use them here in hypertensive emergencies. All right, so first we have here clavidipine. So all these medications are IV. So clavidipine is an ultra short acting dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker, so it's super fast. The serum elimination half-life is five to 15 minutes. The initial dose, as you can see here, is 1 mg per hour and can be increased to a maximum of 21 mg per hour depending 
if the blood pressure uh, start dropping or not. Important contraindications to clavidipine is aortic stenosis as it can drop the blood pressure too much too fast and uh, also dyslipidemia because it is administered in lipid laden emulsion. Another calcium channel blocker that we can use is the nicardipine, again IV infusion. Initial dose is 5 mg per hour and can be increased to a maximum of 15 mg per hour. It takes a little bit longer for, for it to start acting and it has longer elimination half-life, 3 to 6 hours, but is very, very commonly used in the ER for hypertensive emergency. Another very commonly used antihypertensive medication in hypertensive emergency is the beta blocker labedalol. Labedalol is, as you know, a dual alpha-1 and beta-1 and beta-2 adrenergic receptor blocker. It has very rapid onset of action within 5 minutes or less, which makes it perfect for the IV treatment of hypertensive emergency. As you can see here, labedalol uh, can be given a series of IV boluses, starting with 20 mg initially and followed by 20 to 80 mg every 10 minutes to a total dose of 300 milligrams and uh, it can be also administered as a constant dose infusion with starting rate of 0.5 to 2 milligrams per minute and also please note that higher total doses and infusion rates are useful in larger overweight or obese patients now um, important things that you need to know about labedalo is that um, you should be very careful when using it with patients with asthma and COPD. Why? Because as we said, labetalo is a non-selective beta blocker and it will also, apart from the beta-1 blockade, it will block the beta-2 receptors which are found in the lungs, right? So the beta-2 receptors in the lungs normally cause dilation of the bronchioles, right? And if you block the beta-2 receptors, you will cause the opposite of dilation, which is constriction and you will worsen asthma and COPD. Also, you don't want to use labetalol in patients with bradycardia and uh, more than first degree AV block. Why? Because again, labetalol will block the beta-1 receptors in the heart and normally when stimulated, the beta-1 receptors increase the heart rate. If you block them, you won't be able to increase the heart rate and it will worsen any existing bradycardia and AV blocks above first degree. All right, so this is the end of our hypertensive urgency versus emergency diagnosis and treatment video. Please give a thumbs up if you like the video and also subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends because we are planning on uploading many more videos to come. The next one will be on penicillins from the antibiotics video series. See you guys soon and have a great time studying.